it's Charlie Kao, Travel Mall Media Group at ITB Asia Singapore with Philip Shates, Senior VP with uh, Dorset Hospitality, and we're here really to talk to Philip, who also wears another hat as a leader in the LBGT uh, uh, travel market, gay, lesbian, and the uh, transgender, transgender, and bisexual, bisexual market. Thank you. You're welcome. And um, Philip, what is, do you do as a hotelier to reach that market and to let them know that you understand them? And you're going to look after them. Well, understanding them comes quite naturally to me, actually. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I meant your staff. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Okay. But no, but it's an it's a it's a very important question that you're asking, right? Because it is about understanding actually your market segment or your target audience, right? Um, and that's true for any segment and for any audience that you're actually trying trying to get in. Um, however, look, I mean, there's a, there's a personal um, uh, piece. That, that I have here, but there's very much a business um, um, ambition that we have. And that is very, very simple. Um, I, according to statistics that, that I have read myself, the LGBT segment is projected to produce 200 billion US dollars in travel in this coming year. That's a massive amount of money. It's um, the largest um, producing uh, segment in the world, actually. It's higher than what families produce. Oh. And yeah, think about it. I mean, when you really think about it, very often you have double income, no kids. Not all the time, but true, often. True. Pro 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 you know, people that are very educated, that have um, good incomes, and they love to spend their money, uh, right? Uh. And we, as Dorset, um, want a piece of that money, so that's hat number one. But hat number two is, and this is very much our philosophy, we want to deliver genuine Asian hospitality. What does hospitality mean? It means that you have a guest house, that you're inviting guests into your house and you treat them with respect, irrespective of where they come from, what religion they have, what ethnicity they have, what color of their skin there is, or sexual orientation. And we're very proud about this and it comes, it goes all the way from the very top all the way down into our lives. You uh, are in a unique position, I mean, compared to many other hotel groups, small, medium, or large, yeah. that you had the support of your president and chairman yeah. uh, for this initiative. And it's very wise, because if I understand it correctly, your, your advertising is not going to say, hey, if you're L LBGT market, come stay at Dorset. Yeah. You, you gave an example yesterday at your, at your presentation of some very subtle uh, messages yes. to them. And it's the same offer or special that anybody would receive. Right? Exactly. Look, we, what we have in our organization is our core values, which everybody has. Our core values are what we call the four eyes. Um, and one of them is um, inspiration and initiative. And, and what we mean by that really is that you empower your people actually to um, really, really treat everybody, whether it is people that they work for, work with, or guests that they receive, with empathy and with respect. And um, that starts for us with the hiring process already. So we want talent actually in our organization that has that sort of in the DNA. You know, everybody is different, but we're really looking for people that have that open mind and they think um, borderless basically and um, so it starts with the hiring process but we also have training programs in place where we reiterate this and again diversity therefore for us is a very big issue but diversity again it doesn't just mean LGBT it also means anybody that may come across as being different right we want that we want to nurture that. But you have to get down to very specifics about each particular niche market because they're different and if you don't understand them of course you you're usually frightened by them. Uh, of course look I always say um, when you you need to understand who you're talking to right and who your guest is and what they really would like to have 
Um, for example, if I would have a Muslim prayer group in my hotel, yeah, I wouldn't exactly. offer them pork knuckle as a dish either, right? So mm. it's this education that needs to happen. It's to be vocal about it, to really talk to your people about it, to, to break down these fears, because um, that is really what what creates um, issues sometimes, right? And if you break this down, everybody's happy. And that's in the hospitality what we really want. We want happy people. If a travel supplier says, hey, I want to share that 200 billion market, how do I learn about the market in mm -hmm. the first place? And, and then number two, once I've learned it and I've embraced it, uh, have that kind of good household keeping stamp that I am LGBT friendly. Yeah. Uh, what, what are the resources as a travel supplier can I go to? There, there's several resources, Charles, but there's one organization which is really powerful by the name of IGLTA, um, International Gay Lesbian Travel Association. Um, to become a member of that association, that's when you get access to all the hotels or travel suppliers of any kind that consider themselves as LGBT friendly. Right, so that's number one. As a hotel, you want to be listed there because the, the, the crowd, and that could be travel agents or end consumers, they look for that. It's an endorsement for them, right? It's about. So the market will be looking for that Absolutely. seal. Of course. I mean, this is like, this is, this is and, and research has really shown that in the LGBTA segment, um, people want to make sure that where they go, that they feel welcome, right? And that they be, they're treated with respect. Um, but they offer a lot of training as well, or Q and A's for questions that people have. Again, it's about education, right? So look, in the end, people are people, no matter what they do or where they come from. But it's about understanding what the fine nuances or differences are, and break down that that fear of not understanding it by educating yourself and. And, and I'm glad you used the word travel agency or yeah. tour operator for that yeah. matter, any yeah. reseller. Yes. So they can belong, uh, they can go to this and other organizations, but the International Gay and Lesbian Travel Association, yes. and and learn about it. But I guess for a travel agent or reseller, mm -hmm. for them to tap into the market, they basically need to change their mentality of any fears or hang-ups, whatever you want to call it, and go, that's just a customer who has time, money, and I'm going to ask you the, the next question, Sure. okay, because I asked you yesterday, is does the gay lesbian market buy ex gay exclu lesbian exclusive type products or they buy the same things everybody else does? They buy anything and everything. There's different, there's different um, um, stuff on the market, right? There's, for example, gay cruises for gay only. But it is what, if you want to do this, do this. A lot of people don't want to do this. I mean, if you want to, it's, it's really anything and everything, Charles, right? There is specific product on the market, which is for gay and lesbians specifically and only, but much bigger is um, that gay and lesbians travel all the time and they just want to be treated like everybody else and they want to stay in a hotel or in a cruise or in an airline, whatever, and just be like everybody else. That's what it is. So back again to the reseller travel agent, yeah. just keep that in mind. There's no, yeah, there's some niche products, like for every market, for every niche, but in general, it's the run of the mill product. Exactly. It's about, get if you want this market, educate yourself, but I guarantee you, Charles, a lot, a lot, a lot of travel agents or travel industry or suppliers, they already have a piece of the market without even knowing it. But That's the funny part. Right. But I wanted to emphasize because I, I think, uh, and depending on which part of the world you're in, of course, uh, people in USA, Europe, quite liberal uh, communities yeah. and poli government policies towards mm -hmm. uh, uh, gays nowadays, yeah. uh, and and it's happening here in Asia no? and China as well. You did a survey. Well, it, I didn't do the survey. Somebody else did the survey. But there's an, a really interesting survey um, that was done in China on the on gay and lesbian travel um, behavior. 
And there was one uh, very powerful piece of information I think came out, which talked about age groups and, de and, and them being openly gay or not. And um, it clearly showed that the millennials, the 18 to 24 year old ones, 64% um, I believe it was, are openly gay already. Wow. And as the age group climbed up, that deteriorates very fast. But what that means, and I think this is really great, is they're coming. It's part of millennium, right? It's part of millennium mentality. What, to be and what's the government open. policy there? I mean, there isn't any? In China, I'm yeah. not aware of any policies. No, okay. I don't think you can get legally married, but it's about mentality of the yeah, people, I actually. See. Right? That's what's more important That's unbelievable. than government policies. These policies will fall into place once and Hong, mentality and, and Hong Kong, Thailand, uh, well, Thailand is pretty uh, liberal about it, no? Mentality-wise, yes. Government-wise, maybe not, not so, okay. right? Um, in Hong Kong, also there is a uh, government-wise no, but there's a pride parade, there's a gay lesbian film festival every October in Hong Kong. Right, there's a lot of activity and look it's mainstream thinking which overrules at some stage um, or makes government policies. And I think the other thing that's taking place, certainly in the US and maybe Western Europe, is as society and the government as well become more liberal accepting to the level of gay marriages that uh, in the social security system and everything else, it's become part of the mainstream society and therefore from a travel perspective, whether you're in the supplier side or reseller side, hey, here it is, 200 million billion bucks, okay, it's right. become mainstream. So if you, well, for whatever reason, you didn't tap it before, go for it, huh? Exactly, look, I have a very simple view on this. A, it's a human rights issue, of course, right? But if we can't get this into people's set, Money sometimes talks. <laughs> so. Philip Shades, uh, uh, VP, Dorset Hospitality, thank you very much. You're welcome.